Mr. Kusunoki, is there anything you'd like me to do? What's this all of a sudden? Well, I just felt that you've been the only one giving. Well, Miyagi, is there anything you want me to do for you? There isn't. You do plenty enough for me already. If I had to say, my wish is only to know what your wish is. Then my wish is to know your wish. And thus, it is my wish to know your wish, Mr. Kusunoki. Okay. My wish is to know your wish. And thus, my wish is... Mm. Okay... Before, you asked me what I would do if I only had months to live. And I gave three answers, yes? Starry Lake, make your grave. And childhood friend? Yes. So you want to meet your childhood friend then? Not exactly meet. It would just be me seeing him, of course. I don't doubt that I'll be disappointed, but... Even if my memories may be spoiled, I feel like I can endure it now. Because you're here, Mr. Kusunoki. Well, the best consolation for a loser is a more miserable loser, after all. That's not what I meant at all. Are you daft? Ah. I know. My bad. Like this, right? Yes, like that. The man wasn't waiting for a train, but for someone coming off of one. He could just tell. His expression had a certain kind of easy-going confidence. In essence, it was an expression only for those who had confidence from loving someone, and being loved. I figured Miyagi didn't care to see who that someone was. Guess we better get going. Thank you for your concern, but I want to watch. I want to see what kind of person he loves now. I'd actually been considering doing a number of things, taking advantage of how he couldn't see me. But I changed my mind. Such as? Such as forcibly hugging him, that sort of thing. If it were me, I think I'd do more than that. Such as? <laughs> If nobody's going to blame me, no reason not to do selfish stuff like that. Indeed. No one will blame you. A definite change started to take place when my lifespan went below 50 days. Hey. Hmm? Having fun all on your own, eh? Looking like a real creep, though. Made me lose my appetite. Why you gotta do that? Mm. The heat broke your brain? Mm. I'll call an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, say something. Huh? Is that you, Mr. Kusanaki? You with Miss uh, Miyagi again today? Uh, uh, I'm terribly sorry, but uh, could you give I, up that uh, scene? Uh, uh, That's a big guy. It was that man who lived on the same floor as me. Is he pretending he sees Miyagi for me? The hell's that guy's problem? Whatever. Let's go. Ah. <sighs> Let me just say first, I don't necessarily believe this Miyagi girl actually exists. Yeah, I know. You were just helping, huh? I'm grateful. Actually, it's not entirely that either. You may not admit to it, but I see what you're doing is some kind of performance art. To see how many people you can trick into believing this Miyagi really exists. Through pantomime, you're attempting to prove how people's common sense can be shaken. And that attempt has succeeded on me somewhat. You mean you can actually feel Miyagi's presence to an extent? I don't like to admit it, but I believe so. 
To the extent that, if I actively accepted the existence of Miss Miyagi that you're causing me to sense, I wonder if I would eventually be able to see her for real. Miyagi has fair skin, and I describe her as a delicate girl. Usually she has cold eyes, but sometimes she'll show a modest smile. I wonder why. All of those characteristics match with how I imagine Miyagi. And now, Miyagi's right in front of you. Why do you think that is? I'm not sure of that part. She wants a handshake. Hold out your right hand, will you? So then, am I to believe Miss Miyagi is shaking my hand? Yep, but you probably think you're moving it yourself. Would you tell him I said thank you very much? Miyagi tells me to tell you thank you. I somehow felt she might. Don't mention it. Sensing Miss Miyagi's presence at your side, perhaps I'm not the only one who can do so. So long as something gets it going, I wonder if Miss Miyagi's existence might very quickly be accepted by everyone. He was right. It's hard to believe, but after that event, people around us started to accept Miyagi's existence. Of course, it wasn't like they seriously believed in this invisible person. It was more like people mutually agreed to accept my nonsense and play along. As we frequented the town's attractions and festivals, I became a little bit famous. As a pitiable interesting fellow. One night... So cute little Miyagi is right here, is she? Huh. Now that you say it, I feel like she is. <laughs> I thought if I asked you enough questions, I'd catch you in a contradiction. But it's all perfectly consistent. Very interesting. Here you go. You should consider yourself lucky I can't see Miss Miyagi. If I could see her, I'd probably fall for her in no time. She's just my type. Doesn't matter either way, cause Miyagi likes me. Uh, Ow. Don't go saying things like that. Huh? Mr. Kusunoki? Mr. Kusunoki? Just how much do you like Miss Miyagi? You should show us! I want to see it too! Miyagi. Yes. Even I was stunned by the sheer absurdity of what I was doing. None of them honestly believed in Miyagi's existence. They must have thought of me as a crazed, happy fool. But what was wrong with that? This summer, I was the best clown in town. For better or worse. I was much more drawn in here than I'd expected. The station waiting room, the school with the time capsule, the festival stands, and... I turned to a new page, and in return, I drew Miyagi sleeping. It had been years since I'd drawn a piece of art without stopping. That thing I'd been so burned by. Art. Looking at my completed work, I felt surprise and satisfaction. But also I felt a tiny nagging feeling. It was easy to overlook. I could have ignored it, closed the sketchbook and gotten right back to sleep. But I was sure of something. I used all of my concentration. I strained my senses to their fullest to figure out that nagging feeling. I reached for it. Like a letter floating in a stormy sea, my hand always slipping as I tried to grab it. Many minutes later, as I was about to pull back in defeat, it landed naturally right in my palm. I lifted it very, very carefully out of the water. The next moment, as if something had possessed me, my pencil flew across the sketchbook with intensity. I continued for the entire night, 